Hey Trucked Up guys and gals, in this video I'm going to reveal the surprising and critical issue most people are overlooking with EV trucks that could impact the entire future of the industry. This is likely the biggest issue holding EV trucks back from truck space. Let's get all trucked up and dive right in. As we know, EV trucks are growing in popularity, but not at the rate they could be. We've all seen the headlines about plummeting interest, and although most of that is inaccurate and demand is still growing, but just not at the expected rate, there is no doubt that many truck owners, when it comes to making a new purchase, are still holding off on taking the EV truck plunge. So why is that? Many truck folk have serious concerns, usually about reliability, range, and charging times. I've covered many of these in previous videos but that's not actually the biggest problem. The challenge facing EV truck owners isn't the truck itself, but what you face when you get these things on the open road. And no, it's not about chargers being so hard to find, you'll need to carry a massive generator and some kind of backwood survival food kit with you. And no, it's not forcing you to take roadside yoga. Green pose with the, the one with the foot over the... Back, that was one. No, uh... Or write your memoir with all the time you're wasting waiting for your battery to fill up. My life journey began when the doctor removed me with the forceps. Oh, I, that's good. I like that. The main problem is that the focus on battery technology is overshadowing the charging infrastructure specifically as it relates to EV trucks. Batteries are already sorting themselves out. But I just spoke to a couple yesterday who really want an EV truck in that it suits most of their needs, but they have to go on the road as much as once monthly, often with a trailer, and they have to travel 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles on those trips. The reality is that currently that is close to impossible to do with an EV truck, and here's why. Charging infrastructure is critically important for the widespread adoption and success of EV trucks. The greatest challenge lies in one or a combination of the following three things, with number one being the most critical. Number three, charger output and reliability. There are a lot of chargers out there once you know where to look. It's not like when you drive down the highway and you have the big gas station sign ahead. No, no, there's a little E sign. It's on your little app. You can read the corner. You gotta go into the Google Maps and look at it. It's a freaking horror show. But there's tons of them. Unfortunately, most of them are horribly slow. Level twos on the road are absolutely useless. Sure, level two chargers, they're great outside office buildings and condos and libraries and other public locations where leaving the car for the day is possible. But that's their limit. The bad news is that even DC fast chargers are simply not up to snuff with the technology already being built into the most up-to-date EV trucks. We need comprehensive, cutting-edge options to allow manufacturers to work toward capitalizing on the highest standards of charging. Right now, it's the opposite way around. Charging companies are putting in the cheapest possible option they can get away with, but it's a growing crisis. Think about it. With a gas pump, there's no need to replace it every year. I mean, I went to a gas station in a little tiny community and still they had the pump handle from the 1940s. The last time a major upgrade was made to gas pumps was when they went digital, and then again when pay at the pump was introduced. Now, just imagine the massive of cost to having to replace your entire network of chargers every time the tech advances. That's nuts. <laughs> the charging industry is working in reverse. Remember that famous line from the movie Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come. Uh, uh, okay, I admit that most of you uh, weren't born before the Battle of Midway and thus see my uh, references as well. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Old. But anyway, it, it's a great freaking quote and, and it's applicable here. So, bleh. rarely can I charge at the maximum level possible on my Lightning, which is 
is relatively old tech and considered slow at 155 kilowatt charging rate. What does that tell us? If the charging industry doesn't build it, no one's coming. Number two, the gas station. Remember when gas jockeys would run out with smiling faces and their tidy spot-free uniforms and fill up your tank, wash your windows, check your oil and tire pressure, clean your headlamps, and merrily get you back on the road like some kind of superhero pit crew? Yeah, yeah, me neither. And you want to know why? Because I'm not that freaking old after all. But yeah, that was a thing. The point is that gas stations were, and still are, uh, convenient. The auto service industry realized early Early on, that the more convenient a gas station was, the more business it would get. <laughs> Did that confuse anyone? That's pretty clear, huh? <laughs> Fast forward to today, and you can basically buy your own meal, snacks, drink, get a little bit of rest and relaxation, and sometimes you don't get your groceries, along with doing your banking, using the washroom, hell, even trading your stock in Bitcoin, for crying out loud, all at the once traditional gas station, and all while your truck is filling up with the trailer in tow, with another pump available to fill up the ATV, motorbike, or applicable man toy, dangerously lashed to some often legally questionable part of the vehicle or trailer. And if that wasn't enough, there might even be a septic station to empty your gray and black water tanks in and fill up potable water for your next camping stop. None of this, zip, nada, exists at any charging station. Did these geniuses somehow overlook, I don't know, the entire history of road trips and driver needs? Oh, Oh yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, yes they did. No bathroom, no convenience store, no snack bar. Usually you're greeted by a curb of a parking lot facing nothing but the road you just pulled off of. This is ballistically stupid, but the ultimate in frontal lobotomized charging station planning has to be the lack of a pull-through. No truck is viable as a truck unless it can go the distance doing the very things that it was designed to do. This is number one. Remember that lovely couple I mentioned in my community that wanted to buy an EV truck but couldn't? This is why. 100%. But what now? With the cost of these chargers being so restrictive to just go out and replace thousands of them, how do we get an industry that isn't that enthusiastic about replacing their insanely profitable internal combustion engine trucks with a network that services the new ones? They're basically losing a pile of cash on. This is not a small matter. This is the billion dollar brewing boondoggle that could technically kill the electric pickup truck. And thus, this is a pivotal moment. And as we can see, it has almost nothing to do with the trucks. As I pointed out in my video on trailers coming to market, that dramatically change the range available for towing, the solutions will come from what is done beyond the manufacturing process. The future of EV trucks is almost solely dependent on the development of EV truck stops, where ultra-fast chargers, minimum 250 kilowatt, that already outpace the internal charging limits of the vehicles they service, making them future-proofed and drive driving the industry towards catching up to them, lined up in pull-through sequence, available to charge both truck and battery-assisted trailers simultaneously with all the conveniences and services expected at a traditional gas station. What's crazy is that this already is there. If just one out of every 10 gas stations made a switch where only one of their pull-through lanes wasn't gas pumps but chargers, we'd be well over the hump. But where is the impetus and incentives to do so? Where are all the billions of government charging infrastructure funds going? Well, it looks like to the same curbside charging frontal lobotomized geniuses that caused the problem in the first place. This is the make or break moment. And I hope companies like Mobile One, Chevron, Shell, and all others here in Canada, Petro Canada, stop screwing up with more curbside, uselessly slow DC fast charger installs and take the plunge that will truly revolutionize 
the EV truck future. And I need to hear from you on this critical point for EV trucks. What's happening on your end of things? Do you own an EV truck? And are some of these things really holding you back? Are you thinking about a new purchase? And this is the reason you're not going to go for an EV truck. I want to know those things. I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments below. And please consider subscribing and clicking that bell notification icon. And a little like would be helpful too. For more coming insights on electric trucks right here on Trucked Up EVs. Because thanks to your likes, subscriptions, and support, this channel has already exceeded a big goal for me. It's a milestone of reaching 1,000 subscribers. You made that happen, and I am eternally grateful. Once again, thanks for watching.